Good afternoon, Sean here, Mountains Garage. It's a chilly Tuesday afternoon. It's only in the teens outside and the wind's blowing about 30 or 40 miles an hour. It's been that way for about 12 hours. It's supposed to subside here pretty quick, but I don't think you tuned in for a weather report. I'm not even sure why I'm telling you, but I am. I had a mid-afternoon root canal yesterday and I didn't do too much. A little before dark, I still felt like uh, going out in the box and harvesting a idle air control and a throttle position sensor off an old throttle body. And I cleaned that up and stuck it on the six liter, but that's not super exciting. But on my list of homework was to build a vacuum slash boost manifold, a quarter inch pipe, an eighth inch pipe. I didn't have a plan. I didn't even actually get the fittings out till I was all done to see if they'd clear, but they do. Kind of eyeballed everything, did a little bit of measuring. I only had a few hours, and I think uh, it's going to take me longer to clean up my mess, if you look at the mill behind me and everything around me, than it did to actually make the piece. But here's how I did it. Over here in the closing Condia mill, I took a random scrap piece of aluminum, and I marked it out. I'm going to drill 27 64 all the way down through. I've got it sitting on a couple parallels. So I should be able to just, the drill bit's just long enough, should be able to clear the bottom without touching the vise, because you never want to crash the tool into the vise if you can help it. Somebody already has a few times on this piece of equipment, but it hasn't been me yet. So this hopefully goes pretty well. Aluminum drill's decent. I got my nasty cutting oil that I bought a gallon of, so that's a lifetime supply. I'm going to drill the hole. I'll be back. My goal is to build a vacuum slash turbo boost manifold to mount on the firewall. So I'm going to drill down through with the 27 64 drill, which is the correct size for a quarter inch MPT tap, pipe tap. So I'm going to drill all the way down through. Then I'm going to take a 21 64 and go in this way and intersect this hole and tap all those eighth inch pipe five times. That's the way it's spaced out. There's room for five, I think, and still be able to swing the fitting. And this mark here, I believe I'm going to take this much out of it and then have a couple mounting holes left in the L that's left. I just don't need this and I think it would look better. Worth the effort. That pot's going to make a giant mess, but you can't worry about that. It'll clean up. It's a long way down. I think we made it. I swapped the mill and the jet lathe and the bandsaw to my American Rotary three-phase converter and they seem to run a lot better. I never tried the bandsaw with a static converter but I like that you can with the static converter I was limited to how many times I could start and stop this without overheating the converter. Now the mode is just humming away in the corner. You can probably hear it. Control panel on the wall. Works really well. Set up once again in the closet, and maybe it's Condia instead of Condia. Uh, I got a couple parallels under my block, so it gets it up above the jaws of the vise. Otherwise, it would be down inside. In this case, I wouldn't have any danger of hitting the vise, but it's just easy to use a couple parallels. They're just a couple precision ground uh, pieces of metal. They come in all different shapes and sizes for setting up work just like this. Uh, what's cool about the mill is once I get the axis centered, I can just run it at the x-axis this way, drill a hole, move it right down, and uh, they'll all be in a perfect line. The first winter I had the mill, and I watched lots of how-to videos, I was confident enough that I would set up one hole and then I would have all my math done and I could move the handle over here and it would move my workpiece to the right spot. But for today, I'm just following the prick punches. Nothing fancy. But if you know what you're doing, you have that all set up. Uh, manually on a machine like this. And if you're a CNC guy, well, you're way smarter than I am. I'm just making holes.
Super safe doing that one-handed while filming. <laughs> Setting up now with an end mill. Uh, it's probably got enough power to take it in one shot. I'm gonna go down close to the vise, but I'm kind of wimpy and I'll just go probably an eighth inch at a time. Uh, the work, in this case, the uh, block is clamped securely, but you have to be careful because one direction it'll want to climb and spit the piece out. It'll want to force the material away from the end mill and the other way it will draw it in and everybody's pretty happy, so. If you have a piece sticking way out, uh, be aware of a thing called climb milling. This isn't a how-to, it's just things I've learned the hard way. I'm not a machinist, I'm just trying to keep all my fingers. Final pass. Very satisfying. Again, super safe looking through the camera, one-handed. Set up now for two mounting holes. And I don't think I will countersink them like for an Allen head because there's plenty of room for the bolt or Allen head to sit on the shelf. So that'd just be a waste of time, I guess. So I had to talk myself out of it. But I'll just drill two holes and call it good. Now we're done with the mill other than cleaning up the mess. Tap in the last eighth inch hole. The old uh, snap-on tap with a little bit of lube works really well. I bought this set of four taps at a swap meet and that particular eighth inch is a little more blunt. Doesn't start quite as easy. This one is more tapered. It goes in like butter. I try to tap them all about the same depth so all the fittings would line up. The pipe uh, thread is tapered, so you can go too far. It's kind of a feel and a guess. Same story with the quarter inch pipe. Lots of lube. I like to keep checking it. I'll grab a fitting of the you know, quarter inch brass in this case. Make sure it starts in and starts to get tight in a turn or so. That's all you can ask for in a pipe fitting. Now I just got to pretty it up. Call it a day. So a project tonight while I'm relaxing, I'm gonna see what this actually would have cost to buy one. Uh, but it's custom and it's mine and I own it now. I have a whole box, thanks to my buddy Charlie, of raw material, aluminum and steel. Uh, it's really handy, kind of like when I showed you under my bench the other day. It's projects that are, aren't developed yet. And this is what I live for. This is why I collect junk, to make something out of it. It cost, well, the fittings cost money at some point when I bought them. I think I bought them for transmission overflow. I don't remember. I'm surprised I even found them, but I did. So that's it for today. I'll tune in in a day or so and hopefully accomplish something else. Today's another example of, I got a late start. I didn't think I'd really accomplish anything today. I kind of putzed around with the idle air control motor, trying to wire with the little bolts and spitting them across the floor until I got smart enough to hold them with vice grips. And I actually accomplished something today and it's only five o'clock and I gotta go, I'm gonna go in and make dinner because that's what I do. Thanks again, I'll catch you next time. And don't forget to subscribe to Mountain's Garage, YouTube channel.